Good afternoon guys, my name is Nick Bockelman, we're over here at TGR Exotics and today we have Niffler. Niffler is a female short-beaked echidna. Now if this is your first time watching, you guys can please feel free to ask any questions that you would like, I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. And so we shall begin. So again, this is Niffler right here. Niffler, the short-beaked echidna, is probably the most unique animal at TGR Exotics. Now, for those that don't know, the echidna is a very special mammal, extremely unique, in that they belong to an order of mammals known as monotremes. And what that means is these mammals right here, mammals, actually lay eggs. Is that, if that is crazy. So this is a mammal that lays eggs. Now there are four different species of echidna and the duck-billed platypus, and those are the only living members of the order Monotremata, which are the only mammals on earth to lay eggs. Now where you would find this little girl right here in the wild, short-beaked echidnas are distributed all throughout Australia and are also found in the southern portions of Papua New Guinea. Now they are a fossorial mammal, meaning that they spend much of their time underground. And that's where their main prey items live. So this little girl right here in the wild, her main prey items would be termites, ants, worms, and grubs. And if we take a look, you see she's got this cool little beak right here, right? Now what a lot of people don't know is that beak is extremely specialized in that it can actually pick up electrical signals emitted from the bodies of their prey items. So while she's digging through the ground, she'll use that beak and then she'll pick up the electrical pulse from a termite mound, ant mound, or a worm or a grub. And then she has this really long little tongue in there. It's kind of like an ant eater, though they are not related. They have about a six inch long tongue and they'll flick that out really quick in and out to eat the ants termites and worms. Now these animals here do not have any teeth, but instead they have these hard pads that are located on the roof of their mouth and on their tongue, and that'll help them to crush up the ants, termites, and other little invertebrates that they consume. Now as you can see, they're covered in quills. That's a defense mechanism. And now that does not make them related to porcupines or anything. Again, the, their closest relative is the duck-billed platypus. So this is merely what we would call convergent evolution, where animals that have similar physiological traits are not closely related. And so that would be what you would have right here with the echidna and porcupines. Now the quills, just like the porcupine though, are made of keratin. So the same thing as your fingernails. Now. When these guys reproduce, after the male and female get together and copulate, the female has a gestation period of about just 22 days. And what happens is, after that 22 days, she lays an egg. And just like a marsupial, these guys actually have a pouch. And so she'll lay the egg and it'll stay in that pouch. And it's just one egg at a time. And that egg will just incubate for about 10 days. And after 10 days, a baby echidna is born, and the baby echidna has one of the most adorable names. They're called a puggle. Now, the puggle is born without any quills. They're completely naked, and they'll actually live in the mother's pouch. They'll stay there for about, I'd say, I'd say about 55 days or so. After that point, they start to grow quills, and they're a little too sharp to be in their mother's pouch. Now, these animals here do not have nipples, actually. They do have mammary glands, but they don't have nipples. And so what happens is the milk is actually secreted through pores in their skin, and they have small depressions where the milk will form puddles, and the baby echidna will drink from those puddles of milk. Now, after the 55-day mark, like I said, the baby will leave the pouch, but what they do is they actually stay in a burrow that mom digs especially for the baby and they'll remain in that burrow for about seven months and mom will go out and forage and about every four to five days she'll come back to feed the youngster now the baby's going to be suckling for about seven months in total but they'll stay with mother echidna for an entire year so she watches after the baby for a full year very dedicated moms right here 
Now, like I said, these guys are fossorial, so if you look at their claws, they have some really awesome claws for digging into the ground. In fact, whenever it comes to holding her, I actually, I feel that her claws, when they grab me, are much, much more painful than the quills themselves. And if you guys would have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks, Denise and Ruby, um, yesterday for your bag of goodies. I did share your grapes today with the, the bear cats or the binturongs, um, and the eggs will go to the bears. Thank you very much. I say, guys, this is probably the most unique animal that we have at TGR Exotics. They are just absolutely phenomenal. Can you imagine a, a mammal that lays eggs, and not only that, but can pick up electrical signals from their prey using their beak. Now the platypus and the echidna are the only mammals that are known to have this ability when it comes to picking up electrical signals from their prey items. Other animals that are able to do that are sharks, for example, can do that. Certain species of South American fish known as knife fish have this ability. But these are the only mammals that have that ability to pick up those electrical signals with their beaks to find their prey items. Really cool. Um, so Amanda asks, where do they live in the wild? They are found, this species right here, the short-beaked echidna, is found all throughout Australia and a small portion of southern Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea used to be connected to Australia by a landmass known as the Torres Strait many, many years ago. Joelle says it's cute how she walks. Yeah, it's almost like she waddles back and forth, but she can move pretty quick. Oh, and she's yeah. a fantastic climber. Yeah, she is. She's got these amazing claws. It's really difficult to get her out of her tub whenever we do different educational programs with her. She likes to ball up and get in the corners or whatever tub we put her in for a temporary holding area, and uh, it's very difficult to get her out. Does anyone have any questions for Nick? Oh, Amanda asked, do they have any predators? Predators? Now these guys right here, when they're full grown like this, not really. I mean, the babies will have to watch out, but the babies are in the mother's pouch. Maybe something like a monitor lizard or certain mammals like quals might have a go at them. But for the most part, these animals don't have any natural predators, especially at this point, because they're covered in these quills and also they live a fossorial lifestyle. So most of the time they're underground. You don't actually see them. Very rarely do you see them come up to the surface. And when they do, it's usually to find a mate or to forage for food. But again, a lot of their food is also underground. And so like Nick's saying, they're underground. So these guys with Australia having those terrible fires, um, these guys would have had a greater survival rate because um, they do burrow underground and they're known to survive these fires that happen, you know, there often. Um, and even when they're burning um, in the forest there for fire control, um, these guys will burrow down and so they don't have such an issue of loss like a lot of the other animals in Australia. Joelle asks, how old is she? She is about seven years old. Justin asks, is it a marsupial? No, they are not a marsupial. They're in what is known as a monotreme. So when it comes to mammals and- I'm gonna look at her belt. Do you wanna show them their, her belly? Yeah, let's it's see. It's kinda hard, let's see. She, yeah. does, she just is furry. But she does have a pouch like a marsupial, but the big difference- Yeah, but the difference is these guys right here lay eggs, whereas the marsupial gives live birth. When it comes to mammals, you have three main different kinds. As far as reproduction goes, you have the placental mammals, which is like dogs, cats, pigs, horses, etc. the majority of mammals. And then you have marsupials, very um, short gestation periods, and then their babies stay in the pouch. This would be kangaroos, wombats, Tasmanian devils, and then the monotremes, which is only comprised of four different species of echidna and the duck-billed platypus. Yeah, so like kangaroo's gestation is only 30 days, and that's for like a big red kangaroo. It's only 30 days because it lives out the rest of its baby time in mom's pouch. Yeah. yeah, born extremely underdeveloped. And these are similar. So the porcupines we have here, whenever they give birth, they actually have all their quills when they're first born. 
But the echidna here, the puggle, when it hatches from the egg, it is completely naked. They do not have any quills. And like one would say that they have a temporary pouch. And so the baby can actually stay in that pouch for a period of about 55 days up until they start developing their quills. And then the mom makes a, makes a burrow specifically for that baby, which it will inhabit for She's months to come. She's like, there's some good smelling stuff over here, probably in the wood. She might want to tear it up. Um, so we have a lot of people just joining us. Do you want to tell everyone what your friend is you have today? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Come here, sweetheart. So this right here is Niffler. Niffler is a female short-beaked echidna. This is a mammal found in Australia and small portions of southern Papua New Guinea. And they're extremely unique in that they are one of two main mammals that lay eggs. So there are four different species of echidna and the duck-billed platypus, and these, these are the only mammals in the world Thanks that actually know. lay she eggs. Knows. She's on a mission. Yeah. Uh, Matthew wants to know, do they make sounds? No, they do not. There's no sounds that these guys make. Maybe they might breathe heavy here and there, but no, they, for the most part, there is no sound that is emitted from this animal. She would hold her face still. At the very tip of that long beak are her two nostrils, and underneath is a little slit for her tongue. Yeah. But she's a busy girl. Yes, she is. She's real excited to be out here. I know. So many amazing smells. Because they like bugs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she's going to go back. I wonder if we step far away if she will make her way back over here. We'll see if she finds her way back. Pretty smart. <laughs> Yeah, it could be difficult to hold this, but not for the reasons you might think. It's not her quills that are She's so strong. painful. Yeah, it's got a strong grip with those claws. All right. Let's see. The echidna races. She's like, oh, we're in a different area now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me smell. I'm heading the wrong direction is what it is. She does shed those quills as well, or her hair. We do find them in her tub of dirt. She lives in a huge, one of those 110 gallon um, Rubbermaid tubs filled with sphagnum peat moss. Um, they are nocturnal, so she is down in that tub all day long. Um, she comes out at night, so she's down in that tub. She can breathe down there. Um, and then her food is up at the top and she comes out at night. They're amazing. Uh, Cindy wants to know how many would they have at one time? They just have one baby at a time. They have one egg. So after they mate, their gestation period is 22 days. They lay one single egg every time. They always just lay one egg. And then that egg takes about 10 days to hatch. And they'll have their little puggle. That's what the baby echidna is called, is a puggle. And from there, the llama's like, it'll stay in the mom's yeah. pouch about 55 days. And like I was saying before, oh, ooh, yeah. They say, guys, what she'd be doing right now, ooh. Did ooh. you see her tongue? Yes. You don't get to see that too often. So what she's doing is she's using her beak to pick up the electrical signals that emanate from the insect bodies that would be her prey items. Maybe. She covers a lot of space really fast. Waddling away. Yes, for those who are tuning in, if this is something you would like to share with some friends and family, uh, please do. Or if you know someone that would like to see videos like this and they don't have a Facebook, you can check out our YouTube page. TGR Exotics Wildlife Park. Again, that's TGR Exotics Wildlife Park. Please subscribe. You can check out videos you may have missed. Share them with friends and family. Ooh, there she goes. She's getting it. I know. She's fast. <laughs> she's like, whoa, I'm going to be ready for a nap after this. I've never seen her walk so fast. <laughs> such a cool animal for those tuning in right now I mean this is definitely one of the most unique yeah, this is the most unique animal that we have here yeah the TGR exotics it's very rare to get to encounter one of these animals outside of their natural home I mean 
there's very few facilities yeah very few facilities that carry them and even if yeah if you took a trip to australia or papua new guinea precious the llama y'all saw the other day she's like what is that creature she's been following and it's along the fence line trying to figure out what that little thing is <laughs> she's, she's not so quite confused sure. here comes another llama the llamas are all like what is that look see here comes the white llama that's cover girl and she's like what is that creature <laughs> she's alarmed <laughs> she doesn't know how to feel about that yeah. oh, that's amazing uh -huh. she's like what is that that's a scary monster does Her anyone have any Nip questions or? for Nick We're all just having fun watching, watching these llamas. Watching the llamas trying to figure out what is that? Here they come to the fence. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what is that? This is amazing. Uh huh. This is the first time I bet anyone's ever seen this. Llamas interacting with an echidna. <laughs> They're like, what is that? We came into the fenced area not knowing what the other animals, the goats, the llamas, the pigs might think about this. Um, let's see. Lily asked, what kind of bugs do they eat? So, these guys prefer termites and ants, and the secondary problem would be worms and grubs, but the first thing they're going to go for are ants and termites. Those are their favorite foods, and then worms and grubs. So, for the most part, it's small invertebrates. Again, they don't have any teeth, so they have these hard pads on the roof of their mouth and on their tongue. They're going to use to smash up prey. So they're not going to eat things like large beetles as they can't fit in their mouth anyways. Something that their small tongue can grab, stick to, and then not something not too tough so they can mash it down with those hard pads in their mouth. Yeah, I had a couple goats walk up and see. It's like everyone's curious at the fence. See, even, even, <laughs> even the hoofstock know that this is a very unique animal. They're like, it shouldn't be here. Here they come. They're like, what? Go back to Australia. The goat's like, what is that? What's their average lifespan? Yeah, about 20 to 30 years. She went under there. It could be hard to document wild, wild individuals. You'd have to put some sort of tracker on them because they're underground so much. It's hard to consistently be able to find them certain individuals but around 20 to 30 years the average life is there. Where's she at? Shamrock's checking out too. No see now she's like not quite sure. So you see how now she covered herself kinda in a ball. And she's made herself round and she put those quills are sticking up on her shoulder blade area. Defense mode. But the tail's always in defense mode as you can see those sticking up. Is she still under there? She's like so over there. Gosh, it's such a cool looking animal. Nothing like that in the world. <laughs> Nothing else, at least. It's sprinkling out right now, but that doesn't seem to really be bothering her. And so, if you guys would like, again, if this is your first time tuning in, you know, we have these every day at 3 o'clock. So for those that have been tuning in since the beginning and for those who are new, you can pl please tune in tomorrow at 3 p.m. We'll have another animal for our Live on the Wild Side segment. We do different animals every day. It's always something cool, fun, and exciting to learn about. Well, thank you every day for joining us. I see a lot of familiar names and some new names today as well. 
Um, but you can go on to our webpage, which is tgrexotics.com, um, and on there is a green bar on the left side you can click on that has more information about how you can help us, whether it be we love produce, we love, um, there's a recycle and donate list, there's other ways like Venmo, PayPal, and we have a GoFundMe page. Um, because the park isn't open and that's how we generate income to help feed all the animals and stuff so anything is fantastic and I thank all those people who already donated we really appreciate it Joel says thanks Nick oh anytime it's my pleasure and again this is Niffler the female short beaked echidna truly thanks. amazing thank you see y'all tomorrow bye